Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Tine. I'm here today with my June makes and favourites video. So everything I made in June and a few of my favourite things. I had a bit of a bumper month in June actually. On my list I've got a lot of things that I managed to get made up which is awesome, especially seen as it was the last month of my pregnancy. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with the amount that I got done. Just before we get started, I'm wearing the Megan Nielsen Cara top, which is a maternity pattern and it's one of my most worn makes during my pregnancy. Made it with long sleeves and this fabric is an awesome cotton jersey from Fox and the Bear fabrics. And then I've just teamed it with a plain teal neckband. I'm also over the top wearing a maternity jumpsuit that I got right at the start of my pregnancy and I've worn it so much I think it cost me £15 and I've just worn it to death. It's so comfortable. Right so the first thing that I got made in June was a dress and it's the Wanda wrap dress by Wardrobe by Me. I bought this pattern from Sew Your Own Wardrobe. They stock quite a lot of the Wardrobe By Me patterns and I really like the look of this one because it's for knit fabrics so it'll be ideal for my changing body shape. And also it's a wrap front bodice so it'll be ideal for breastfeeding. The fabric I used for this was a an amazing viscose jersey which I got from Bobbins and Bolts. Quite a few businesses have sold this fabric but it's just so fun, so bright, so colourful. It's been very popular amongst the Instagram sewing community. So many people have made amazing things using this fabric. I did have a little bit of an incident though because I just thought that I'd bought 2.5 metres of this fabric which is enough to make the size that I needed in this dress and I started cutting it out and I don't really have anywhere with enough floor space to put out the whole of the fabric to check that all of the pattern pieces fit on so I just started cutting out my pattern pieces and then got to the point where I had two pieces left to cut and not enough fabric and when I looked at my order I'd actually ordered 2.2 meters so I think that might have been all that they had left so I just went for that amount thinking I could probably get away with it but I definitely couldn't. So I had to go on and look for another business that had it in stock and thankfully so your own wardrobe did so I purchased another half meter and that was just enough for me to make my dress. I really enjoyed sewing this up it was a really straightforward construction the instruction booklet and diagrams were fantastic. I managed to sew most of it on my overlocker and I'm really thrilled with the result. It's so comfortable to wear. I love the huge flowy skirt and the bright colours are a little bit different for me but I actually really like it and it brings me a lot of joy when I wear it. Something that I've been thinking a lot about recently and that I would like to add into my videos is talking about the size that I make and my body measurements and things but obviously being pregnant my measurements have been changing constantly so it's not really been the time to introduce that but I am planning on you know once my body starts to get back to a consistent size and shape I will start to talk more about that and let you know what my measurements are and therefore the size that I've made in the pattern and it might just help people with making the pattern themselves and trying to decide on a size. The next thing I made was another dress for me and it's the named clothing kilo wrap dress. I made one last month in the black and white viscose jersey. This month I made it in a pink floral jersey fabric from Newcraft House. Now I think it's got some polyester content but because the Newcraft House get their fabric from designers, it's all dead stock fabric, they don't have the specific composition of the fabrics listed on their website because they don't know. So it is a jersey fabric, it is stretch but it's definitely got some polyester in there. It gets a little bit warm when you're wearing it and my friend who's got the same fabric found the same. I love the fabric though, it's really bright, it's got really bold colours in. Again it's a little bit different for me, I don't usually wear pinks and things like that but I really like it. Again I made this knee length version so I cut the pattern off just above where the split would start usually on the maxi and I did the tie shoulder hack again so that I've got access for breastfeeding. With both of my kilo wrap dresses I've made I just made my pre-pregnancy size because of the nature of the dress and the shape and the style I haven't needed to adapt that at all for my changing shape. My next makes were actually three of the same garment and that's the Itch to Stitch Cartagena Cami. 
Now I made one last month, if you remember I talked about it then. I just needed a vest top that I could wear in the warm weather and wear around the house that would be really comfortable and this was the perfect pattern. It's just simply two pattern pieces, a front and a back, both cut on the fold, and then the neck and straps are done using fold over elastic. Now when I made it last month, it was my first time ever using fold over elastic, but I loved it found it really straightforward to use and then I ordered quite a few different colours. I will list down below in the description the eBay seller that I got my fold over elastics from. Laura from the Specky Seamstress recommended them to me and they've got a huge range of colours and the delivery was really quick as well. So this month I made three as I mentioned. The first one was made in Art Gallery Cotton Jersey from Like So Amazing which is so soft such good quality, it's got a gorgeous star print on it and I had enough left over to make a matching outfit for the baby. Then I made one in a brushed jersey from First for Fabrics, so it's white with a blue polka dot all over and that's actually the vest top that I'm going to wear when I go into hospital to have the baby and I think I might end up wearing it during my labour as well. I'm hoping that I might be able to spend some of my labour in a pool and it'll be ideal just to wear while I'm in the pool as well. And then the third one I made was to wear when I come home from hospital and it's actually on the mannequin behind me. It's a Stoff of Denmark jersey which I got from Lamazi Fabrics in a gorgeous navy blue with sort of rust coloured flowers all over and I really love that one as well. The only change I made this time with the pattern was I took a bit of the length out. So if you saw my video last month, I talked about adding in 15 centimeters of length to accommodate my bump, but then I did actually find that it was a little bit too long. So I took out five centimeters of the length this time. So I've added 10 centimeters to the standard pattern. The next thing I made is also on my mannequin behind me and it's the Tilly and the Buttons Bertha cardigan. I wanted a navy blue cardigan that I could wear going to hospital and coming home from hospital just as a layering piece, just as something cosy and comfortable. I knew that the Bertha cardigan would be ideal. I wanted to make it in a slouchy knit fabric so I had a look on first for fabrics and they've got a range of rib knits which would be perfect. So I got it in a navy blue but it's like a marl effect blue so it's got sort of a lighter shade running through it. It's super stretchy, super comfortable and perfect for what I wanted. I've made the Bertha cardigan twice before and both times made it in a size 6 but this time I cut the pattern down to a size 5 as I thought it was quite oversized in the other two that I've made and I'm really happy with the result of going down a size this time. That pattern by the way is in the Make It Simple book which is a fantastic book by Tilly and the Buttons. All of her books are fantastic. You get really good value for money, you can pick up the book for less than £20 and you get so many patterns and variations within it so it's a great starting point for somebody starting out sewing or just anybody really that wants to get a lot of bang for their buck. Is that the saying? Bang for their buck. <laughs> Good value for money, basically. The next thing I made was something else with hospital in mind and it's a dressing gown. So when I've been looking at what to pack in my hospital bag and looking at what people recommend, a dressing gown is always on the list. And I knew that I wanted to make a special dressing gown or robe that would just have a little bit more meaning and make me feel really good. So I've had the Helen's Closet Suki robe pattern for quite a while now and never made it. I've seen so many beautiful versions online and I've never got round to it. So I knew that this would be the perfect time. The fabric I used was a floral crepe, which I got from Material Girl Laura. I love the black background with the pops of shades of blue florals in it, it's beautiful. And then I got some contrast fabric, just a plain viscose from First for Fabrics to add the contrast detail. So the band that goes all the way around the front, the waistband, the cuffs, etc. I really enjoyed making the robe, it was a really pleasant sew. Helen's instructions are absolutely fantastic, they guide you so well through every step so it's always a pleasure to sew up her patterns. If I'd been making this as a gift for somebody I would have taken a bit more time and French seamed it throughout but because it was just for me and because it's going to be worn in hospital I didn't need to do that so I finished all of my seams just on the overlocker with black stitching and 
you know, it looks absolutely fine. As Sam said, when I'm in labour, nobody's going to be judging me on my seam finishes. <laughs> When I put this up on Instagram to share it, I got so much good feedback, it was lovely. But a couple of people expressed concern that I was going to be wearing it during labour and it might get a bit ruined and a bit messy. So just to clarify, I plan on wearing it sort of in the early stages when I'm still up and moving around and just as a, as a layer. And then probably after, again, as a layer after I've had the baby. But I wasn't planning on wearing it throughout, so... If anybody had that concern that it was going to be get, getting messed up, then don't worry. <laughs> It'll also come in really handy at home in the weeks after I've had the baby for breastfeeding and things like that. It'll just be great to put on over my pyjamas or over a little vest top and then I can just have access to feed the baby whenever I need to. And then the last garment that I made for myself was a romper and it's the Phoenix Romper by Cali Fay Collection. I picked this pattern up from Sew Your Own Wardrobe again and I just loved the comfortable style of it. It just looks so cool, so comfortable and airy and flowy. And because we've experienced a bit of a heat wave recently in, in the UK, I needed something that would just keep me cool because pregnant ladies feel the heat more anyway. And then with the added heat wave on top, it was just not going to be good. So I knew I needed something really cool. And this was the pattern that I went for. I decided to use this amazing viscose fabric from a So Haley Jane box a couple of months ago. I love the brightness of it, the gorgeous turquoise background with the amazing colours of the leaves. And it was actually a really easy sew. It came together really quickly. There were a couple of the techniques in it that I didn't agree with, so I just did my own thing. For example, they had you hem the legs on the flat before constructing the legs, whereas I don't like to do that. So I left that step out, constructed the romper, and then I hemmed the legs as like the last step. I just prefer it that way. You might be different. I also changed the straps so that I could have tie straps again. So I just made four straps and then I tie them in knots and bows at the shoulders. But actually, when I'm wearing it and I need to go to the toilet, for example, I don't even undo them. I can just take them down. So I love the fact that they've got the ties because they look really pretty, but I don't actually need to untie them to take the romper off. <laughs> So that is everything that I made for myself in June. Quite a lot of things. I'm really pleased with what I got done. The next thing I made was some things for the baby. So here we have a big stack of muslin cloths. So a friend recommended to me that these will be the thing that I need the most <laughs> once I have a baby, that you need stacks of them because you use them all the time to wipe up little bits of sick and things like that. So I knew I wanted to make some myself. I picked up a few different pieces of double gauze fabric. So the rainbow fabric is from Like So Amazing. The two animal print fabrics were from Fabric Godmother. And then the blue with the gold dots, I think was a remnant from Like So Amazing, but I might be wrong. But most businesses sell double gauze fabric anyway. If you were going to buy some for the same purpose, it's worth just asking the seller if it is soft enough for baby clothes or baby cloths, because some double gauze isn't as soft as others. So I did actually ask Sarah, like so amazing, and Fabric Godmother if these would be suitable, and they said they would. And they're absolutely right, they're all really soft. So all I did was, for example, I got half a meter of this one, and I just took that half meter and I folded it into three equal sized pieces and cut those. So I ended up with three pretty much 50 by 50 centimeter square pieces. I then overlocked the edges. So with these ones, I just used black overlocking because it's got the black animal print design. So overlocked all the edges and I was able to just, with all of my pieces, put them through one after another to do the same edge on each piece snip them in between, then turn them again, do the same edge on each piece. So it was just saving a lot of time. So then once I'd overlocked all four edges, I then just folded it over about a centimetre 
and top stitched. I think on the first couple I measured the centimetre and then I got used to seeing how big that was and then I could just eyeball it for the rest of them. And there we have it. So I've got 15 muslin cloths there and then I've got a few that we were given or we bought ourselves. So I think I'm stocked up, I've got plenty. I did then make quite a lot of baby clothes in June as well. Quite a lot were gifts for other people and then some for our baby as well. I won't talk through every single item that I made, but I will tell you the patterns that I used. Probably my favorite patterns that I've been sewing up for babies last month were the Made by Jack's Mum Explorer Raglan Tee and the Harem Pants. These make a gorgeous set to put together and they're so easy to sew. They come together really quickly, they're not too fiddly and they look really effective. You can combine fabrics in a really nice way. So when I mentioned earlier that I had some fabric left over from my vest top to make an outfit for baby, these are the patterns that I used and I just love the look of them. They're so, so cute. I can't wait to see baby wearing them. The other Made by Jack's Mum pattern that I made this month was the Over It Alls. So Sam's mum asked me to make a set as a gift for her to send to a friend's baby. And she loved sort of the dungarees and she wanted a snap placket. So previously I've made the dandelion dungarees from Sew Over It. Well, it's Poppy and Jazz, but it's owned by Sew Over It. And they don't have a snap placket variation. So I turned to the Made by Jack's Mum Over It Alls where you can add a snap placket if you want to. I hadn't made that pattern before, so I wanted to do a little test version. So obviously I made a little set for our baby too. And I'm really impressed with the way that they look and how they came together. I thought it would be a lot more difficult than it was. The only thing I found with the pattern was that I wanted to make the lined version. Now, if you add the snap placket at the crotch, you can't make it fully lined and reversible. So you can just make it partially lined. That was fine. So I went ahead and did that on the practice version, which was for our baby. But in the instructions, it doesn't have you finish the bottom of the lining in any way. So you've got the lining section inside and the bottom of it was just unfinished. Now I know with jersey fabric, that's not going to fray anyway, but it just looked a bit untidy. So I decided on the second version, which was going to be gifted to somebody, that I would just turn that under and zigzag stitch it to make it look a bit neater and I'm really happy with that. I am planning on making some more over it alls because I love them, but I'm going to wait and see what it's like putting them on our baby and whether we need that snap placket. Because if we don't, if it's easier to just undo them at the shoulders and pull the dungarees down, then it'll be quicker and it would save money actually not having to use all of those snaps just to do the version without the snap placket. So I'm going to wait and see before I make any more. For the set for Sam's mum to gift, I also made the Wee Lap Tea by Patterns for Pirates and the Teeny Beanie by Patterns for Pirates. I've talked about those patterns before. They're great, they're free patterns and they make fantastic gifts. So I would recommend those. And then the last patterns that I made for children were from Brindle and Twig. The first one was the mini modern joggers. So I wanted to make a couple of sets for our friends who've just recently had a little boy, but they've also got a three-year-old boy and I wanted to make the boys matching clothes. So for the new baby, I made him the Made by Jack's Mum Explorer Raglan Tee and Harem Pants. But for the older boy, the three-year-old, I thought, something different for the bottom half would be a bit more grown up and these joggers are just gorgeous. So they've got knee patches, they've got an elasticated waist. I could have put in a drawstring. I opted not to, but I might do that in future. You could also put on back pockets, but again, I opted not to do that, probably for an easy life. <laughs> but again, that's an option that could be done next time. But I really like these joggers. They've got pockets as well, and I think they just look really cool. The last pattern I made was actually the first pattern I made in June, and it was the retro romper. I did show this in last month's video because I made it to match the kilo wrap dress that I'd made in the black and white viscose jersey. It's so cute. It's a really adorable pattern. I love the look of this romper, but it was a little bit fiddly, takes a little bit more time. So again, I'm not going to make any more until I've put it on our baby to see, you know, is it comfortable? Does it look nice? Is it easy to access for changing and things like that. If it is, and it's a positive experience, then I will make a couple more because it just looks so cute. 
but like I said, because it takes a bit more time, I'd rather wait and see how we find putting it on the baby and things before I make any more. Right, so now moving on to some of my favourite things. The first thing is a TV show and it's one that I watched in the space of two days. It's on Netflix, it's called The Big Flower Fight. So it's very similar to The Great British Sewing Bee, The Bake Off, things like that. It's a competition where you've got pairs of people competing against each other to make huge floral or plant-based sculptures. It's absolutely fantastic, I'd highly recommend that you watch it. I really loved the creativity, just seeing what they did with the theme because it was a different theme each week. It's definitely worth watching. The next thing I'll share with you is a business and that's a jewellery business called Smile and Make. Now the lady that runs it makes laser cut jewellery and her pieces are beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. She opened pre-orders last month for some of her jewellery and I had to snap up a couple of the pieces. The first one is this necklace, which is just absolutely stunning. It's got the rainbow with the glitter detail, the rain cloud and the raindrops and the star, and then it says look for rainbows there, which is absolutely gorgeous. And the quality is fantastic. It's really thick with all the different layers. It's really sturdy and I feel like it's not going to break, which is good. And then I couldn't resist this one as well. Well, this one is actually the one that I wanted first and then I couldn't resist getting the rainbow one as well. But this one again is a necklace, but we've got all the different blues and it says look for stars and we've got gorgeous little glitter stars running across here and it's just absolutely beautiful. I'm really happy with them. I will link to her Etsy shop down below, but it's best to follow her on Instagram to find out when the new pre-orders are going to be because I don't think she's got anything just listed on her shop that you can buy because everything sells out so quickly. The next thing I wanted to share with you is an Instagram account and it's called Holly Dolly Darling. Now, she is an amazing sewist who makes beautiful clothes, but the reason I love her account so much is because she makes adorable matching clothes for her and her daughter and it's just beautiful. I love seeing when she uploads new things. So a favourite recent post of mine was an Ogden Cami hack dress that she made in different colours and it's just absolutely beautiful. It's a maxi length dress but then she made a matching one for a little daughter and it's just the cutest thing so it makes me really excited about making matching outfits for me and the baby. <laughs> so go and check out Holly Dolly Darling if you haven't seen her account before. Then a YouTube channel I wanted to share in case you haven't seen it before is The Crafterpreneur and this is run by Aisha who makes fantastic clothes. She has a really infectious bubbly personality. I love the way she comes across on her videos. She posts makes videos, sewing room tours, that sort of thing. She uploaded a video the other day with lots of gorgeous makes in and some really lovely sets of pyjamas that she made for during lockdown. But my favourite make in that video, I think, was a pair of True Bias Lander shorts that she made in a tropical print fabric. But the reason I loved them so much was because she pattern matched all of the pockets, which would have taken a lot of time, but they looked incredible, so well worth doing. So definitely go and check out The Crafterpreneur on YouTube if you haven't watched her channel already. She's also over on Instagram as well. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is a couple of books. So as you know, if you watch this channel, I do love reading and in lockdown, I've been able to read a lot of books. I think this year, 2020, I've read 45 books so far. I know that once the baby comes along, that will probably stop. But for now, I've been reading a lot. So a couple of my favourite books of the month one was The Fear by C.L. Taylor. It's a psychological thriller, which is my favourite genre. So I'll just read a description of it for you. Sometimes your first love won't let you go. Lou Wandsworth is used to being headline news as, aged 14, she ran away to France with her 31-year-old teacher, Mike Hughes. Now 32, Lou's life is in tatters. She resolves to return home to confront Mike for the damage he has caused but she soon finds that Mike is unchanged, having turned his attention to 13-year-old Chloe Meadows. 
Determined to make sure that history doesn't repeat itself, Lou decides to take matters into her own hands. But Mike is a predator of the worst kind, and as she tries to bring him to justice, it's clear that Lou could once again become his prey. So that would definitely be a recommendation from me. I gave it five stars on my Goodreads account. Highly recommend. And my second favourite book of June is one that's going to be a bit of a Marmite kind of thing. Some people just wouldn't be able to cope with it, but it's called Sweet Pea. It's by an author called C.J. Skews. Again, it's a thriller, sort of a murder, serial killer theme, but it does have some quite explicit scenes in it and it does have some bad language in it. So if you can't cope with those two things, then I would avoid this one. Again, I'll read a bit of a description for you. The last person who called me Sweet Pea ended up dead. I haven't killed anyone for three years, and I thought that when it happened again I'd feel bad, like an alcoholic taking a sip of whiskey. But no, nothing. I had a blissful night's sleep, didn't wake up at all, and for once, no bad dream either. This morning I feel balanced, almost same, for once. Rhiannon is your average girl next door, settled with her boyfriend and little dog, but she's got a killer secret. I'll leave it there. <laughs> so I would really recommend it. I read it really, really quickly. I then passed it on to my mum with a bit of a warning and said, I'm not sure you'll be able to cope with the explicit nature. And sure enough, she couldn't. She read a couple of pages and decided it wasn't for her, but knew that my dad would love it and he devoured it in two sittings. <laughs> so it is a fantastic book, but just comes with a little bit of a warning about the explicit nature of some of the scenes and the language involved. So that is everything for this video. I made lots of things for me, for the baby, for friends' children as gifts. I'm really happy with everything that I got done. And as I say, considering it's so late in my pregnancy, I feel quite proud of myself. I would just like to say thank you so much to everybody for how positive and supportive you've been throughout my pregnancy. I've had so many lovely comments throughout and really supportive comments, advice, just really lovely things and it's made the whole time a lot more pleasant and nice really. Being pregnant during lockdown hasn't been the easiest it's had a lot of positives, but it's also had some negatives and the support of you all has made it a lot easier. So thank you so much. I have had a few people asking if myself or Sam would be able to let you know in some way when baby arrives. And of course we will do that. We'll find a way, whether that's a short video or a message on my community page or something like that. We will put something out on YouTube to let you know that baby has arrived safely and everything. This video has been a bit of a bumper one, so well done for sticking with it. I'm going to go and get a cup of tea now. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. Please hit the notification bell if you want to know when my next video will be up. I can't guarantee when that next video will be because as we speak, it's the 3rd of July, and my due date is the 7th of July, so it could be any time that baby decides to arrive. I really hope it is. <laughs> but I will come back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all well and happy sewing. Bye. Just before we get started, I'm wearing the closet case. No, I'm not. Do that again. I also changed the sleep. No. So I knew that the birther card and...